In this video, I'm going to show you how to print and assemble a power relay capable of switching up to 250 volts that you can use in conjunction with my 3D printer safety circuit or a separate controller like a Raspberry Pi or Arduino running Octoprint or similar. This power relay will enable you to control the power to your 3D printer remotely. If you haven't seen my 3D printer safety circuit, then check out the link above. In that video, I used a bought power relay that will work up to 120 volts AC. For those of us who live in places that have a higher mains voltage than this, we need a separate power relay that's capable of switching a higher voltage. This is why I designed this power relay. I won't go over all of the details of the safety circuit in this video, I'll just show you how to build a higher voltage power relay that you can use instead of the bought one. Both relays are activated by a 5 volt feed, so are interchangeable. All of the parts you'll need are listed in the description below, along with download links to the free STL files. Once you have all of the parts, print out the two halves of your case. Check that all of the components fit as shown. For the screw terminal block, we'll need to tap some M3 threads into the mounting holes. While you have the tap out, tap the four holes for the case screws. Mount the screw terminal block and you're ready to start wiring. First, you'll need to cut the power cable and strip the insulation off all three wires as shown. Now, I hope I don't need to say that this lead should be unplugged the entire time you're building this relay and should only actually be plugged in right at the end when everything's built and tested. And if you didn't know that cutting the power lead while it was plugged in might be a problem, then I suggest you don't actually attempt any part of this build. Any mistake with mains voltage will very likely lead to death. This is not an exaggeration. Do not work with mains voltages unless you know what you're doing. In fact, doing so in some countries may even be illegal, so check the laws and regulations where you live before attempting any part of this build. Okay, so if you're still with me, I'll assume that you fully understand the dangers and are proceeding at your own risk. Terminate the ends of all wires with spade terminals. I use crimp terminals, which is the safest, most secure electrical connection when using this kind of terminal block. From right to left, the first connection is for both earth wires, the next is for both neutral wires, the next is for only one of the live wires, and the last for the other live wire. This way we have broken only the live wire and have two terminals below that we can connect to our relay. The relay will connect and disconnect these two terminals, effectively connecting and disconnecting our live wire. Before we go any further, we need to add some strain relief to the cables so that if they're pulled, the connections inside will not be affected. This can be done with a couple of cable ties as shown here. The relays that I've used are rated at 10 amps and 250 volts AC. That means that using them for the 240 volt mains we have here in the UK and a 3D printer with a 500 watt power supply is no problem. We now need to connect the common and normally open terminals on our relay to the two live wire terminals on the screw terminal block. Make sure the wire you use here is capable of carrying the current that the relay is rated to. I've used 1.5 millimeter squared, which is the same as about 16 gauge. This matches the wire used in the power lead, which is rated to about 15 amps, which is plenty. If in doubt, just cut a longer section out of your power lead and use that wire. The last thing to connect inside your case is the 5 volt feed side. This wiring connects the 5 volt socket to our relay so that it can actuate the relay. Here we need to create a connection between the DC plus terminal and the in terminal. I did this just with a small piece of wire. We're going to leave the relay jumper pin in the high position, which means both these pins need 5 volts for the relay to work. We then need to connect the negative wire to the DC negative terminal and the positive wire to either of the outside terminals that we just connected together. Once we've then connected these wires to the positive and negative terminals of the socket, we can push the plug into its position in the case. Now that everything's wired up inside the case, we need to check that everything works before closing it up. Please note that the mains wiring is still not plugged in and won't be until everything is tested and the case is closed. To test the relay, I'm using a 5 volt feed from a USB cable that I've cut. The red and black wires are your positive and negative. Connect these to our plug so that you can plug it into the socket. When plugged into the USB power adapter, you should see a green and red light on the relay. If you only see a green light, then it means that you've got a bad connection or your jumper pin is in the wrong position. Now we need to test that when actuated in the relay, it's actually opening and closing the live wire. To do this, I have my multimeter in the continuity setting, which will give a beep when the connection is made. Now everything is doing what it should, we can screw the case top on. Now we should have a fully operational power relay that works for up to 250 volts. Remember that this relay is only rated up to 10 amps though, so don't go putting any high load on the other end. 
We shouldn't do this anyway because the lead isn't rated to higher than 10 amps, so we're not changing anything there. With UK plugs, you have a fuse in the plug anyway, so it's always best checking that that fuse is not higher than the relay in your power relay. That way, if you accidentally did plug it into something that would try and draw a higher current, it would blow the fuse before it blows the relay. I've calculated that my particular printer only draws about two amps anyway, so it's actually safer to put a lower fuse in, put like a five amp fuse in your plug and everything's covered. If you're enjoying any of my content, why not consider supporting the channel by clicking the buy me a coffee link down below. Don't worry, you don't have to actually buy me anything. Just click follow and you can see what I'm up to next. If you plan on mounting the relay to any kind of surface like I did, then use the mounting holes inside the bottom before you put the case lid on. You can now plug the power lead into your printer and you'll switch five volt feed from either your safety system or Raspberry Pi. If you want to know how to use a Raspberry Pi and Octoprint to control your printer remotely, then hit subscribe and the notification bell and you'll be notified when I release that video. If you don't know what Octoprint is, it's a way of controlling your 3D printer through a web interface and even your phone with the right app. It can enable you to turn on your printer and get everything warming up while you send it a G-code file. And you can even tell it to start your print. With a camera, you can even watch your entire print remotely. If that's what you're into. Finally, you can now plug in your mains plug. With the mains switched on, you should have no power supplied to your printer. When you give five volts to the low power feed, you should get power at your printer. If this isn't exactly what happens, turn off your power and unplug both ends of your power lead before even thinking about opening the case to check connections. Hopefully with everything working correctly, your power relay is built. In conjunction with my overheat safety circuit, I now feel happier that there's an added layer of safety ready to shut down my printer before I even know there's a problem. Thanks for watching.